watching K Gun 9 on your side. News at 10. We begin tonight with breaking news. Tucson police investigating an incident where five people were found dead inside a home. Now your side is Justin Shecker live at the scene. Justin, you just spoke to the police chief. What did he say? Guy and Cell, good evening to you. That's right. Chief Roberto Villasenor briefed the media here about 20 minutes ago. He confirmed Tucson police found five bodies, all with gunshot wounds, inside a home here on the 800 block of West Calle Medina. Let me step out of the way to show you the live active scene going on right now. Police tell me the home is located on the north side of Calle Medina, past that crime scene van, uh, beyond that light post. Now, police tell us someone called 911 uh, just before 6 o'clock this evening. The person says he was supposed to meet a friend at this home. But instead, he noticed a body with signs of trauma through the window. Police arrived shortly after that, and they located, again, a total of five bodies inside this south side home. Uh, we're here near uh, I-19 in Valencia. Now, the chief did not disclose the age, the gender, or the relationship of the five victims. He also says police did not receive any calls of shots fired. Let's listen now to Chief Roberto Villasenor. The way that they're going to approach us is very methodical. Um, they'll go in, do a, a walkthrough of the residence just to get an overall picture of what they have, and then they'll grid off the house and do it section by section to make sure they're recovering anything of evidentiary value. Obviously, photographing and, and videoing the, the house to determine exactly where everything is later on when they have to reconstruct. So it's going to be a very long night for Tucson police detectives documenting uh, the five separate crime scenes found inside this south side home. Again, five bodies found dead here in the 800 block of West Calle Medina. We'll be sure to bring you any new information online on kega9.com and on air. For now, we are live on the south side. I'm Justin Shecker, Kega 9 on your side. Okay, Justin, thank you very much for that. And we also have more breaking news right now. This is out of Philadelphia. You are taking a live look where an Amtrak train with 243 passengers derailed. The mayor confirming at least five people are dead. At least 50 people have been injured. Multiple passenger cars jumped the tracks. There is so much damage. There's nothing more than pieces of mangled metal. Here is Philadelphia's mayor. I've been down on the tracks on the scene with my staff. It is an absolute disastrous mess. Uh, never seen anything like this uh, in my life and most personnel will say that as well. The train was traveling Washington, D.C. to New York City, and tonight, nobody knows what caused the incident. The FBI was on the scene to assist in the investigation, but so far, nothing to indicate the incident was an act of terrorism. Well, animal care workers say it is the worst case of animal abuse they have seen this year. A dog found hanging by a rope at Kino Stadium. Take a look. This is the dog getting help at the Pima Animal Care Center. Vets say she had to be carried in and could hardly, hardly open her eyes. Nine on your side's Whitney Clark met with animal care workers today and has more on what police are doing. Good evening, Guy and Stella. Well, Tucson police are investigating what happened and trying to figure out who left this dog to die. Details are limited as the investigation is underway, but Animal Care is treating the dog, staying optimistic about her future. This dog is getting treatment with various pain medications, and someone's always checking her blood pressure. She doesn't have a name yet because animal care workers don't like to name animals until they know they'll be out of the woods. I've been at Pima Animal Care Center for a little over a year, and this is the worst case I've seen. Veterinarians say this dog was found hanging by her upper jaw. They don't know how long she was tied to the rope, and while she has no broken bones, she's in pretty bad shape. Her face is extremely swollen. Her, her eyes are swollen shut. Um, and it does look like she has brain trauma based on the fact that her pupils aren't the same size. She has some pretty significant injuries. Unfortunately, Dr. Jennifer Wilcox says she sees more sick and abused animals than she'd like. Sadly, officers respond to cases like this every day, taking in 24,000 homeless animals a year. 75% of them need some kind of medical treatment. For now, vets don't know what the long-term damage will be for her. Their goal, keeping her comfortable and doing as much as they can. She's going to need a lot of help, so, and a lot of good wishes from everyone out there. We're optimistic, given that she's so young and in good, good condition otherwise, but, you know, we'll have to take it day by day to know for sure. 
The Animal Care Center always needs donations to take care of sick and abused animals. For more on how you can donate, you can visit our website. That's kgun9.com. From the newsroom, Whitney Clark, KGUN 9 on your side. Just breaks my heart, Whitney. Thank you. A Tucson dad speaking out after his daughter may have been treated by tainted dental equipment. The El Rio Community Health Center announced last month that 56 patients at the Congress location may have been exposed to six instruments that weren't properly sterilized. Francisco Acosta says he was notified his 15 year old daughter is one of them. Now she has to go back for blood work and testing. Doctors have repeatedly apologized, saying it was a mistake and they have fixed it. For somebody to come and jeopardize her health, that's what I'm very mad about. Mm -hmm. And I was very worried. I could times that I couldn't sleep. That's my only child. That's the only person that I have in my life. It is an inconvenience, um, uh, but it's the right thing to do. If it was my daughter, my son, my family, um, I would strongly recommend for peace of mind to to get the test done in the time sequence that that we've set forth. Well, Dr. Douglas Spegman says six instruments were involved. Five of them were just the handles, not the part that goes into the mouth. And here are the pictures. The patients are getting tested for hepatitis C, B and HIV. But Dr. Spegman says the probability that anyone got sick is very low. More spikes found in manholes this morning on the east side. Tucson police say there were five intersections where officers found spikes left in the covers. TPD says those spikes flattened the tires of at least 10 people today. These are the same kind of spikes that were found in January and in April. They all look pretty similar. It's the same threaded uh, bolt with a nut on top of it, uh, sharpened end, and it looks like they're obviously placed there uh, for a specific reason to cause damage to vehicles. If you have any information regarding who is putting these spikes in the road, please call 911 or 88 Crime. And now to Nine Your Side continuing coverage. Was it a single smoking gun that cracked three cold cases wide open and led to the arrest of a Tucson fire captain last month? Well, the Pima County Sheriff's Department opened the cold case vault for us to explain the anatomy of an investigation. In any cold case, detectives hope for a single piece of evidence that would lead to an arrest. In David Watson's case, the man accused of killing his ex-wife, her mother, and family friend, they got it. Is there a smoking gun? Absolutely. And, but it may not be in the sense that some people would think it is as the object itself. There are numerous things that the smoking gun could be. And does this case have that? Yes. Well, the Watson case is still being investigated, but in due time, they will tell KGA 9 how they cracked the case. Saved by the same deputy she threatened to shoot. It's a story you will see only on 9. Last Thursday evening, an armed and suicidal woman barricaded herself in a truck near Ruthroff and La Choya. 9 on your side's Justin Checker explains how the incident unfolded without fatalities. Just before 6 in the evening last Thursday, Pima County Sheriff's deputies responded to this northwest side neighborhood when they learned a woman barricaded herself in a pickup truck. She was armed with a handgun and she was threatening to harm herself. And she threatened the deputies. Incident reports 9 on your side obtained say she pointed the gun at them several times. The first responding deputy says she told him if any deputies pulled up directly behind her, she would begin shooting. Another writes, the female was brandishing the weapon in deputies' directions to challenge them. Really, they used a tremendous amount of restraint and discretion in this incident. Less than an hour into the standoff, before the Pima Regional SWAT team was in place, radio call logs show she shot off a round. As she suffered a life-threatening injury, the deputy's objective quickly changed. They immediately relied on the training they've received and transitioned from police action to life-saving medical action. Sergeant Derek Ogden assembled a team to move in. According to his report, we had lethal cover, less lethal option, this being Taser, a hands-on deputy, as well as two deputies assigned to medical attention who put on medical gloves prior to us moving up. Greg Camara is a SWAT team medic. As soon as they moved up, they were already prepared and they began that immediate treatment. And that's why before I got there, they had done so much treatment where I could just assist in continuing that treatment. We have medical shears. Sergeant Ogden showed us an individual first aid kit, the same tool deputies used to treat victims on January 8th, 2011. So we can credit this kit in part for helping keep this woman alive. Yes, we can. Justin Shecker, KGA 9 on your side. 
Every Pima County deputy is equipped with a first aid kit. At last check, deputies say the woman from the barricade situation is still recovering in the hospital. Now, your first warning weather with Chief Meteorologist Aaron Christensen. Our temp has dropped to the upper 60s now at the airport. Wind is at 8 miles per hour from the south-southeast, and our clouds starting to clear out here from west to east. Not much in the way of rain, but this storm system is going to change all of that. Our chance for rain is going up. I'll tell you when you'll want the umbrella next. Thanks, Erin. Walking your kids to school should not have to include picking up drug syringes. But for a Safford family, that is exactly what they have encountered. Now your side investigates next. You're watching Kega 9 on your side.